channel. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jamie. And if you're new, please hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos and you don't miss anything. If you like inexpensive, easy DIY crafts and decor, well, you're gonna wanna stick around because today we've got some no calorie, easy bake, no bake actually, desserts that are gonna look adorable in your fall decor. So with that, let's get started. So for this project, you're gonna need some faux apples. I got these in a large bag at Michael's and I think they were like $6.99. I used my 40% off coupon. Um, and these are the small apples. And I got the small ones because I wanted to put them on my um, tiered tray. But you're also gonna need some Mod, Mod Podge and some paint. My paint color is Classic Caramel. And what I'm using for the nuts is actually a hamster bedding. It's called K-Cob. And it's a really, really big bag. I didn't realize how big it was. But um, I will include the link to that in the, my description box. It's kind of inexpensive, but it it is a big bag. But if you choose not to use that, you can take some toothpicks and cut them up really, really small, but that will take some time. So other than that, you'll just need um, some skewers or dowels and a paintbrush. So I removed the stems from my apples and I just inserted those skewers inside of the apples. And now if your skewers or dowels don't fit tightly in your apple, you can hot glue them in. Mine actually fit really tight inside mine. So now I'm gonna mix up my um, Mod Podge and my paint. And really, I just kinda eyeballed it. It's about 50-50. And I probably mixed up way more than I needed. So you might wanna mix a little and then you can always add more. But it's about 50-50 ratio. Just make sure you get all that mixed up really, really well. And the reason why you want to use the Mod Podge is just to make the, um, the paint a lot shinier like actual caramel would be when you um, dip apples. And also, I recommend using a soft brush for this application. So now I'm just gonna take my apple, and now you don't want to paint your apple per se. I'm just taking a lot of the mixture and just going right up to where the apple curves, where you would end the dip of your apple if you were actually dipping it into caramel. And I'm just dabbing paint, and I want a lot of paint. And it's okay if it's dripping because we want it to come down the edge of the apple. So you want a lot of this paint. And 
and it's okay if it looks runny and uneven because that's actually what caramel would look like if you actually dipped an apple and we want these to look as realistic as possible. So see how I'm just scooping up a lot of paint on my brush and then just dabbing it on my apple so it's going to start running down the side of the apple. So you're just gonna continue this all the way around your apple till you get right at the edge of the bottom of your apple. Now, you really don't wanna put anything further than that because you're gonna set your apples, apples down. And mine did okay on top of this foam, uh, foam core, but I actually probably would recommend getting a small sheet of wax paper or something to put them on just so they don't stick. I actually got lucky and mine didn't stick. I didn't think about it until I went to set it down and I was like, I probably should have got a piece of wax paper to put these on. But you just continue around your apple, putting your um, fake caramel, and then you're gonna set them off to dry. Now I'm gonna speed this up so that you don't have to really watch me paint these apples. And then I'm gonna show you how to put the nuts on. Okay, so now we're ready to add our nuts to our caramel apples. So I grabbed a paper plate just to kind of catch the ones that are gonna fall off. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that your caramel is a little tacky, not, you don't want it to dry all the way, otherwise, you know, your, your nuts are not going to stick. So just make sure that, you know, it's still not real, real wet, so, you know, tacky is good. So you're just gonna start sprinkling the, the K-cob, which is our nuts, on your apple. And then I'm just lightly pressing, just, you know, to get them more into the paint. And again, you're, go you're gonna have a lot fall off. but I just cannot get over how realistic these apples look. It's amazing. So you're just gonna go through and, and sprinkle your apples with your nuts. And now make sure that you don't have any on the bottom so that your apples, you know, will sit upright. So, and as you can see, it, like in this part right here. I do have some that have kind of fallen on the bottom and you'll notice a little bit later in the video I do go back in and either brush those off or push them more up onto the apple. And then that's all there is to it. These are so easy and look super yummy.
Okay, so for this next no calorie, no bake treat, we are going to make some a faux whip topping for our coffee mug. So what you're gonna need for this project is some lightweight spackle. I got mine from the Dollar Tree. And make sure that it is lightweight. You're gonna need a bowl for mixing. You're gonna need a piping bag and a tip for your piping bag. Some paint, a mug, some aluminum foil, a little bit of water, and you are also going to need a small piece of cardboard that you have um, flipped your mug over on and traced a circle and cut out. You can see mine there on the my work surface. Now, I really haven't seen a lot of people add water to their spackle. I honestly, this is the first time that I have done. Well, this is actually the third time that I have done this. The first two times. Um, I could not get my spackle to squeeze out of my piping tip. So that's when I decided to just try to add a little water to it. Um, just to try to get it to come out a little better. You can try it without the water and see if you can squeeze it out. I don't have a lot of strength in my hands. So maybe that is the reason why I couldn't get it out. So you may want to try it first. The nice thing about this spackle is it's very pliable and kind of like Play-Doh. As long as you don't let it harden, you can reuse it. So if you mess up, just remix it, put it back in your piping bag and start over. And that's kind of what I did until, you know, I, I got it to where I could make it work. So I did add, I did go ahead and add paint to it though, because when it comes straight out of the jar, it's, it's kind of a gray color. It's not really white and I wanted mine to be white like whipped cream. So I did add some paint to it. That still really didn't um, loosen it up enough for me to, to get it through my piping tip. So, and when I say I added water, I mean I added just a tiny bit of water because remember, you can always add, but you can't take away. However, if you notice to the side, I have another tub of spackle, and I brought that out on purpose just in case I did get a little bit too much water, I could add a little more spackle to thicken it up. Um, so, and with it only being a dollar, it was easy for me to pick up a couple of tubs of the spackle at the Dollar Tree. So, if you see here, I mean, I am just really adding a tiny, tiny bit of water. And it really did only take a little bit. But you kind of want it to the consistency, or for me... I got it to the consistency of a, like a tub of Cool Whip. Like, you know, when you pull the a frozen tub of Cool Whip out of the freezer and let it thaw. That was kind of the consistency that I got. Not quite, it wasn't quite as thick as like royal icing, but it was, I would say it was pretty consistent with Cool Whip. So then what I did was I took my empty tub and I have a piece of just tape on the back of my um, piece of cardboard and I put it on top of that tub that lifted it up for me and if I needed to hold it up level 
where I could see better, it was easier to do that than try to hold that piece of cardboard. So then I just placed my piping bag upright in my cup so that I could, and opened my bag up and folded my bag over so that I could just kind of spoon my uh, spackle into my, um, into my piping bag. Now I took just a piece of aluminum foil and kind of wadded it up and you'll see what I do with that in just a minute. So I'm gonna fill my bag up with all of my spackle and it took every bit of this to get the amount of cre whipped cream that I wanted. This was really a fun project to do, and I'm excited to do um, more of these. So once I got all of my spackle into my bag, then I lifted it up and unfolded it. Made sure that my tip was out. I did have to pull it out just a little bit. I grabbed my tweezers there and just kind of pulled it down and made sure that it was tight on the end of my bag. I, I don't think that I mentioned too that when you when you have a new bag you have to snip off the tip of your bag to open it up so that your tip comes out so then i just smooth it all down and once it starts coming out of the tip then i just kind of twist it around up there on the top and so then the fun begins you just start piping around and I just kind of piped and lifted and piped and lifted. And you want to go around the edge and I kind of actually came off of the edge just a little bit because, you know, I don't want that cardboard to show once I set it on my cup. And you will have to periodically kind of squeeze that spackle down. So I have one little spot showing there. So you just go around the edge one time. Now I took that aluminum foil ball that I made earlier and I set it in the center and that's going to fill up some space so you don't waste that spackle and it will also allow you to build some height to your whipped cream. Now I my work surface there is actually on a Lazy Susan which it was a genius idea that I had. Sometimes I have those and they surprise me. But I just start working around 
and building up my whipped cream. And then I just kind of went in and filled in a couple of little spots that I thought were empty. Then I decided that my whipped cream needed a little cinnamon and so I ran into the kitchen real quick <laughs> to grab my cinnamon. And then I just sprinkled some cinnamon on top. And now I had, I actually didn't have any cinnamon sticks. So I had actually made a cinnamon stick to go into my um, whipped cream. And I simply, it was so easy. It is made out of just a piece of craft paper and I just crumbled it up real good, wrinkled it up, and I'm sorry I'm out of frame. Maybe you can see my shadow there actually doing it. So, so I rolled it up almost kind of in a flat, like rolled it up kind of flat. Then I took the side where the, the pa you can see the edge of the paper and I just folded it in because you know how the cinnamon kind of has that little folded in piece. So I just folded it in and then I just took some paint and painted it and I think it looks pretty real. So I do have to cut it down though. So then I just cut it down and decide where I want to place it in my whipped cream. And you do want to place it before, you know, while your whipped cream is still um, wet. So I made my little hole where I wanted it. And now I'm just going to take a little dab of hot glue. and just glue it in. And now you can get real creative with these and add some um, beads for sprinkles and some candy canes or just about anything. I would be really careful adding real food um, if you're going to keep these. So I will probably actually take this and spray it with um, some type of sealer. I just love how these turned out and I can't wait to make more.
Okay, so for our final sweet treat, we are gonna make an apple pie. And what you're gonna need for this is some kind of tin. I found this one at Michael's in the clearance section. This is actually what gave me the idea. But you could use a small cake pan or you could actually go get one of those delicious apple pies at Walmart that they have at the checkout eat the apple pie, rinse out the tin, and use that. Any type of little tin will work for this project. You'll also need some burlap ribbon. I believe this is about five inches, and I cut it in half. Some potpourri and some felt and hot glue. Now, as I was doing this, I thought there were several ways that you could go about putting the crust down on this pie tin. Um, one way is the way that I'm doing it, which is taking the burlap ribbon, and because this ribbon, this is ribbon that I already had, so it was five inches, so I just took, I worked in small strips at a time, probably, I don't know, 12 inches and I cut those in half long ways um, and I, I just worked in small sections and I kind of just pleated them so it appeared more like uh, you know uh, you know how you would take a fork and make your crust like that so that's just kind of the way I envisioned it but you certainly wouldn't have to do that. You, you could probably just wrap the burlap, you know, in a circle, maybe just kind of gathering it in, you know, little places along, um, you know, whatever you were using as your pie tin. So I think there's probably several ways that you could, you know, apply your crust, but I did take my time with this and I, I think in the end it was worth it um, because I, I just think it turned out so cute. But I just worked around and just made little pleats and I worked with small sections of ribbon so, you know, that that didn't get in my way as I was making the pleats. And then I just, you know, just kind of worked them in and glued them down as I went around. So I'm going to kind of speed this process up. As you can see, I just, you know, put it in place and, you know, just glued it down where I needed it to stay. And um, now occasionally I did go in and glue it actually to the pie plate, but for the most part, it kind of soaked through, the glue soaked through and and it just kind of stayed where i needed it to stay so we'll just go through this process of pleating this burlap and again there's probably other um, materials that you could use to create this crust as well this is just what i chose to use so here we go <music>
Okay, so I have the crust done, and I just really could not have been happier with the crust. Um, so now for the filling of the pie. So what I did was I took a piece of felt that I had that was kind of a beige color um, and a little bit of polyfill. And again, there's probably other materials that you could use. Um, to make the filling. This is just the way I chose to do it. Um, so I traced a circle. I made it a little bit bigger than the diameter of my pie tin. And um, I just like kind of molded it, I guess, into this, um, into the pie crust. Um, now, I have never made a pie before. Um, I'm not really a cook. <laughs> so, I don't know if you struggle with things like this, but um, I, I did, I don't want to say I struggled, but I did have to fiddle with it to get it to go like I wanted it to go. It wasn't hard. I just did have to fiddle with it some to um because it was a circle and uh, you know if you do a lot of crafts or anything you know circles um can be nightmares sometimes but i did get it in there and um i went i did um i'm not sure if i show it in this clip or not but i did go around and i just kind of lifted it a little and hot glued it around um to secure it but I knew that I was going to make a, um, uh, the strips, I'm not really even, see, I'm not really a cook, so I'm not even sure what you call it, but the little strips to go across the crust, um, so I knew that that would cover up a lot of my mistakes. And now again, if you wanted to just do a solid crust, you could do that as well. Um, and you could make your circle maybe a little bit bigger and then just cut like the little holes in it that, you know, how an apple pie would have like the little holes so that the um, inside could bubble. Um, you could certainly do that as well. I wanted to do the little checkerboard strips. And again, I'm, I'm not real sure if that if there's like a term for that, leave that in the comments for me so I actually know what that's called. Um, so I just took some other felt that I had and I used my pinking shears and just cut strips um, to mimic the, the pie crust on top. And I just, I, I took my ruler, um, I cut the strips or I measured out the strips I measured them like that and then I ended up cutting those in half. Again, this was really easy. It was super easy to do. Uh, it, I was kind of figuring it out as I was going along, so it really doesn't take that long either. It took me a little bit longer because I was figuring it out as I was going, so... So I think I ended up with this size pot. I ended up using, I think 10 strips, five one way and five the other.
And then once I get the strips cut out, I figure out where I want to place them. And I found the best way to do it was to go from the middle out. And I did end up taking the strips off of the pie and doing the weave off of the pie and then kind of picking it up and laying it back on the pie. Okay, so like I said, I did end up taking the pie crust strips off of the pie. It was a little bit easier to work with and um, weave those strips into place. So I just kind of worked from the center out, um, just weaving them and getting them into place. Um, I did glue the center strip down uh, and you could do that or not. It, it just kind of kept that one piece in place. Um, so I didn't have to worry about that. And then once I got it all woven into place, I just put it back onto the pie and just glued everything down. And I think it just turned out so cute. So you can just finish watching this video and let me know what you guys think. So once my top crust was finished and I had it completely woven, I put it back onto my pie and just hot glued it into place. And I picked out some pieces out of the potpourri, which is actually called, I believe like apple crisp or something like that, that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And I picked out some pieces that I thought um, resembled the top of an apple and placed them on top of my pie and hot glued them down as you will see in the final pictures and I just can't even get over how realistic this pie looks. So yummy. <music>
hope you guys like these yummy, no calorie, no bake treats that you can add to your fall decor. I just love how realistic they all look. The caramel apples, the apple pie is one of my favorites. And of course, the whipped cream on top of your mug is going to set everything off. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. It really helps my channel a lot. Thank you guys and I look forward to my next video.